Okay. Adding and subtracting fractions. Um, right, here's your starter though. We're going to start looking at some equivalent fractions, remind ourselves of how to do that because that's a really important skill for what we're going to do today. And I want you to pause the video and then fill in the missing bits to make these fractions equivalent, okay? Pause the video, um, when you're done, unpause it and see if we agree. Okay, we've unpaused. Right, let's have a look at this. Now, whatever you do to one, to the bottom of the fraction, you must do to the top, all right? You've got to do the same thing. So firstly, it's kind of looking at what has happened to the bottom of this fraction. Well, it's four times bigger, which means I'm going to make the top four times bigger as well. So the missing number there should be eight. So it's eight twentieths. Okay, what's happened to this fraction? Well, it's been multiplied by six because six sevens are 42. That means I need to times the top by six as well. And three sixes are 18. So 18 out of 42. Uh, now this time we're going back the other way. I've actually got to think, instead of multiplying, what am I actually dividing by this time? Uh, how many 2's go into 14? It's 7. So it's been divided by 7. Oh, sorry, the tablet's got a bit weird. There we go. Uh, so we've got to divide it by 7. How many 7's in 63? It's 9. Okay, so it should be 2 ninths. Uh, this one, we've got the same thing again. We're going back from the right-hand fraction to the, to the left-hand. So we've making it smaller, we're dividing it by 6 this time. So if I divide the top by 6 as well, there are 4 6's in 24, so you know 24 out of 30 is the same as 4 fifths. These are all equivalent fractions, okay? All worth the same proportion. Right, the top here is 5 times bigger, so we need to make the bottom 5 times bigger as well. And 7 5's are 35, so it's 15 out of 35. And lastly, Again, we're going to the small, well, not the smaller fraction, it's the equivalent, isn't it? But we're trying to go to the smaller numbers, and it's been divided by 5 there. So we're also going to divide the bottom by 5 as well, which is 11, so 4 elevenths. 20 out of 55 is the same as 4 elevenths. Okay, moving on then. So let's do some examples. What have I got here? I've got uh, 2 quarters plus 1 quarter. Now this is straightforward. We're not going to spend a lot of time on these because um, if I'm adding two quarters and I'm putting another quarter with it, well let's think about it. if I had a circle that was split into quarters, there's two quarters shaded. I'm going to add another quarter to it. Well I've got three quarters. If the denominator is the same you can just add the tops basically. You add the numerators because that tells you how many you've got. So instead of two quarters and one quarter I've now got three quarters all together. Now, that's straightforward. So if you see those, bottom's the same, just add the tops. Uh, now, the problem is here, I've got two fractions where the denominator isn't the same. And so what I need to do is make them the same. Okay, I'm looking for a denominator that both of these will go into. Now, as it happens, these first few examples, if you notice, one of the numbers goes into the other. Five will go into 15. If I times the bottom of that fraction by three, I get 15. So if I times the top by 3 as well, so 2 times 3 is 6, I will have a, a fraction that's equivalent to 2 fifths. 16 fifteenths the same as 2 fifths. And all I had to do was spot what to multiply it by to make it up to the same denominator as this one. Now this one hasn't changed, it's still 4 fifteenths. And of course, as we know, once we've got the same denominator, so 6 fifteenths and 4 fifteenths, I can add those together to make, in this case, 10 15ths. Once the bottom's the same, all you need to do is just add your tops. Yeah? Now, I will expect you, though, through this, that if you can simplify your fraction, you should do. Okay, so 10 over 15, both of those will divide by 5, so you can have 2 fifths, yeah? Both bits have been divided by 5. I'll just put that in just to show you. Oops, that is divided by, honest, divided by 5. Um, Okay, so if you can simplify, I expect you to do so. All right, let's have a look at this next one then. So 8 fourteenths, and we're going to subtract. Now, adding and subtracting, the reason I'm doing them at the same time in this video is because it's the same skill. The only bit that's different is the bit where we either add the tops or we subtract the tops. But the equivalent fraction is the same. If, like these, they're not the same, we need to make two new fractions that are equivalent to these 
but with the same denominator. Now, again, notice 7 can go into 14, can't it? I can change this to 14 just by doubling it. But of course, whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So if I double the bottom to 14, I must top, double the top as well to 6. And the first fraction hasn't changed at all. 6 fourteenths is the same as 3 sevenths. Right, now this is the, the, the difference between adding and subtracting. At this point, instead of, oh, I've put add. Oh, fool, foolish man. Should be subtract, shouldn't it? Because that, that's subtract, this is subtract. Instead of adding 8 fourteenths and 6 fourteenths, I'm going to start with 8 fourteenths and take away 6 of them. And I'm left with 2 of them. Notice it's not, you know, I don't subtract the bottoms, I just subtract those tops, yeah? 2 fourteenths. But that can be simplified because both of those will divide by 2. So I divide that by 2 to get 1. And I divide 14 by 2 to get 7. So it's the same as 1 seventh. Right, okay, so we've got 1 seventh. Right, let's move on then. And I want you to have a go at a few questions. There you go. You've got six questions to do. I want you to pause the video. And then I want you to have a go at those questions. And then unpause when you're done. Okay, we've unpaused, so hopefully you've had a go at these. Let's just go through these quickly now. So 1 sixth plus 4 sixths equals 5 sixths. Uh, 3 sevenths plus 9 over 21. Well, we can't do that, can we? Well, you know, it's tricky. So what we're going to do is make an equivalent fraction to 3 sevenths that are over 21, because 7 can go to 21. I just need to times it by 3. So times the top and the bottom by 3 to get an equivalent fraction. And then I... Then add 9 20 once with 9 20 once to get 18 over 21. Does it simplify? Yes, it does. So let's change the pen color. I can divide the top and the bottom by 3. And 3 sixes are 18, and 3 sevenths are 21. So it's the same as 6 sevenths there. Let's carry on with blue, why not? All right, okay, so we've got two fractions here. They've got different denominators, so we need to make those the same if you want to add them. Now, one-tenth stays the same, but five. So how many fives going to ten? Well, two of them, so I've got to double the top and double the bottom. So it's eight-tenths. So I've got one-tenth plus eight-tenths makes a total of nine-tenths, and that's already simplified. One-third plus four. 4 twelfths. Okay, so the denominators are different, so I need to make them equivalent. Now, 3 will go into 12. I just need to times it by 4. And if I've times the bottom by 4, I must times the top by 4. 4 times 1 is 4. Okay, so I've got 4 twelfths and 4 twelfths. Add that together to get a total of 8 twelfths. But this will simplify, so let's change pen. So 8 twelfths, what can I divide both of those by? Well, they can both be divided by 4. So I'm going to divide top and bottom by 4. How many 4s in 8? Well, there's 2. How many 4s in 12? There are 3. So it's the same as 2 thirds. Let's go back to blue. I prefer working in blue. 11 fifteenths, take away 1 fifth. Okay, again, we need... Oops, take away, isn't it? I need... Two fractions with an equivalent, you know, an equal denominator, uh, with the same denominator, I should say, really. So 5 will go into 15. I just need to times it by 3. Now, if I've times the bottom by 3, I must times the top by 3. So it's 11 fifteenths. Take away 3 fifteenths. 11 take away 3 is 8. So it is 8 fifteenths. And that's as simple as it gets. It doesn't simplify any further. 7 6 take away 3 fourteenths. Okay, well, 7 will go into 14. Oops, let's take away again. God, I'm not paying attention, am I? So I can get two equivalent fractions, and I want them both to have the same denominator. I'm going to go for 14, because 7 will go into 14. I just need to double it. But if I double the bottom of the fraction, I must double the top. So 12 fourteenths. So we've got 12 fourteenths, take away 3 fourteenths. So that equals 9 fourteenths, because 12 take away 3 is 9. And that's as simple as that one gets as well. Next one. Let's move on. 
So what if there's some more examples then? So let's just make it a little bit harder again. What if I've got two fractions where one number doesn't go into the other? Well, then I need a different strategy, don't I? Uh, this time, I need a number that they both go into. Now, if you can spot that, it's basically the lowest common multiple, then you could scale up your fractions to get equivalent fractions with the same bottoms. I'm going to show you a method right, that always works. It's not always the most efficient, so you might need to simplify at the end, but it does always work. So let's try this out. Firstly, to get our new denominator, we're going to multiply together the bottom two numbers. So multiply together the 5 and the 4, and that gets you 20. So our new denominator is going to be 20. That's just a nice, easy way of making sure that our denominator will, you know, both these numbers will go into it. Okay, now let's think 5 has been times by 4 to get to 20, so I also need to times the 2 by 4. Times it by its sort of diagonal partner there, and 2 4s are 8. Now the 4, to get to 20, it was multiplied by the 5. So I'm also going to times the top of that fraction by 5 as well. And 1 times 5 is 5. And there I've got two equivalent fractions, so 2 fifths and a quarter, and I can add them together, and 8 twentieths, plus 5 twentieths makes 13 twentieths. And actually in this case, it doesn't need simplifying because that's as simple as it gets. So let, let's run through what we did there. What did we do? Well, here we go. You multiply the bottom numbers together and six times seven is 42. And that gives me my new denominator. And then look, we can just think of this as diagonally multiplying. So I need to times the three by the six to get 18 and the seven by the three to get 21. Okay, so multiply the bottoms and then diagonally multiply. Now 18 40 tooths <laughs> plus 21 40 tooths, if that's even a word. Now 18 plus 21 is 39. So I've got 39 out of 42. Now I think that's going to simplify. It might, it might not be the easiest one to spot, but I think both of these can be divided by 3. So let's do that. Let's divide the top by 3. Well, that equals uh, 13. And let's divide the bottom by 3. And that's actually 14. Hard one to spot that one. I just happened to spot that you could divide them by 3. All right, let's go back to our method, though, for uh, finding these equivalent fractions to add or subtract. Remember, multiply the bottoms together. Now, 9 times by 7 is 63, so we're going to have two fractions over 63. Now, this is a subtract, but remember the skill of adding and subtracting fractions are almost identical. It's just whether you add or subtract the tops at the end. Now, remember, multiply diagonally. Now, 7 times 5. Now, it's important that whatever I times this 5 by, that must go in that first fraction. So, 7 times 5 is 35. It must go in this fraction, so it's equivalent to 5 ninths. And then the 3 is going to be times by the 9. So 9 3s are 27, and that one must go on that side as well. 3 9s, 27 there. Now, of course, as we said, 35 over 63 take away 27 over 63. It's only the tops that we subtract. So it's 35 take away 27. Well, what's the difference between those? Well, it's 8. 8 over 63. Can I divide that by the same number? No, I can't. So it's already simplified. All right, so hit recap. Multiply the bottoms together to get your new denominator. And then you can diagonally multiply. So 4 times 2 is 8. 5 times 1 is 5. And then you've got your fractions which you can add or subtract as you like. Okay, why well, don't you give it a go? Even if you're a bit confused, just give it a go and see if it matches with my answers in a second. If you're all over this, then fantastic. Well done, you. There's six questions for you to have a go at. Press pause and unpause the video when you're done. Okay, we've unpaused. Okay, a half plus a third. I'm gonna use my multiplying method. So two times three is six. So my two fractions will be over six. And diagonally multiply. So three times one is three. Two times one is two. So I got three six plus two six is five sixths. Good, right, here we go. Five times seven is 35. So our two new fractions will be over 35. 
and then diagonally multiply 7 times the 1 is 7, 5 times the 2 is 10, so 7 35ths and 10 35ths makes a total of 17 35ths. Next one, multiply the bottom, so 9 times by 5 is 45, because I know 9 fives are 45. And then diagonally multiply, so 5 times by 2 is 10, 9 times by 2 is 18. And we're adding these fractions, so 10 45ths and 18 45ths makes a total of 28 45ths. Okay, can't simplify that, that's as simple as it gets. On to this one. Right, a quarter plus five ninths. Let's multiply together the bottoms there. So four times nine is 36. So both fractions will be over 36. And then diagonally multiply. Nine times one is nine. Four times five is 20. And then let's add those together. Nine thirty-six plus 20 36 is 29. 36. Now, if you're starting to get the hang of this, well done, you. Uh, next one, right? This subtract. So I've got to remember to subtract in the middle here. Right, 10 times by 3 is 30. So both my fractions will be over 30. So that, subtract that. And then remember to diagonally multiply, but it's important where they go. So 9 times by the 3, or sorry, 3 times 9, same thing really, is 27. 10 times the 1 is 10. It's important that they are that way round because that's the equivalence to 9 tenths take away 1 third. 27 over 30 take away 10 over 30 leaves a total of 17 over 30, which can't be simplified. And lastly, 7 times 5 is 35. So we've got two fractions over 35 and we're subtracting one from the other because that's the sum. And then diagonally multiply, remember to get it the right way round. 5 times 6 is 30, 7 times the 3 is 21, and they must be that way round. When you subtract those, 30 take away 21, leaves 9 30 fifths, and that is also simplified as well. Cool, well done. Right, you're cooking on gas now. Even if you made a few mistakes in that one, maybe you're starting to, to get the, the idea now, and the more you do, the more practice you get, the better you get. So here's a few more for you to do. I want you to press pause again and crack through those, see how quickly you can get them and how accurately you can do them. Off you go. Okay, we've unpaused. I'm going to go a bit faster this time. So 8 times 5 is 40. So I'm adding two fractions over 40. 5 times the 1 is 5. 8 times the 3 is 24. I'm going to add those together to get 29 over 40. And that's already simplified. Oh, subtract, subtraction 1. Right, 5 7s, 35. So two fractions over 35. 7 times by the 2 is 14, 5 times by the 2 is 10, and we'll subtract those two fractions, which will leave 4 30 fifths. It's like someone's cut a cake into 35 slices and you've got 4 of them. Uh, 9 times 5 is 45, 9 fives are 45. 10 fives are 50. Right, 5, diagonally multiply then, 5 times the 8 is 40. 9 times the 2 is 18, and they must be that way round. And 40 40 fifths, take away 18 40 fifths, has a difference of 22, so it's 22 40 fifths. Cool. 11 times 9 is 99, so two fractions added, both over 99. And then diagonally multiply, so 4 times 9 is 36. 11 times 2 is 22, and we're going to add those together to get 58 out of 99. Now, I've got a funny feeling that they might divide by... Do they divide by 3? No, they don't. No, they don't divide by 3. I'm wrong. Nope, that's as simple as that one gets. And, uh, all right, 11 times 3, we're nearly there, 33. And these are subtracted, so 2... Fractions over 33. Diagonally multiply, so three nines are 27. And 
11 times 2 is 22. Subtract those and you should have 5 over 33. And last one, times those two together. So 7 times 5 is 35. And they are subtracted, these ones. And 5 times 5 is 25. 7 times 3 is 21. Subtract those from each other. 25 take away 21 leaves 4. So it's 4 35ths. Cool. Well done if you've got all of those. You are doing absolutely brilliantly. And let's just check the stopwatch. Yeah, we've got time for this as well. So what I'd like you to do now is do as many of these as you can for the rest of the lesson. Choose which you know columns you want to do. If you really want to push yourself, maybe do all three. And then unpause when you're done. And then you can mark them to see how much you've got right. So the rest of the lesson, I want you just to practice doing as many of these as you can. Uh, off you go. Unpause. And the answers will be up soon. Okay, we've unpaused. Here's the answers. So first column, second column, and third column. One of them that I will talk about is this one here, because you might have got the answer of 7 over 7, which is the same as 1 as well. Really, if you're simplifying that, I would simplify that to 1. And remember, all these have been simplified as well. Okay, well done for that. I shall see you next time.